Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. I'm Anton, and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 Nintendo Switch games. However, before you start typing in Where is Among Us in the comment section, let me establish a few things. Firstly, the game must be published by Nintendo. The game must also work on both the Nintendo Switch and the Switch Lite. And finally, the game must not be free to play. This list was very challenging to create, so I will have an honorable mention section for games that were very close but didn't quite make the list. Anyways, before we get started with the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see future videos coming your way, and let's get started. Pikmin is one of my favorite Nintendo franchises. It's extremely underrated and very unique. There's honestly not much to compare it to because of that. Pikmin 3 Deluxe is an enhanced port of Pikmin 3 that was originally released on the Wii U back in 2013. The game has you commanding an army of Pikmin to solve puzzles, explore, collect, and fight bosses and enemies. The bosses and enemies are really strange and probably one of the most unique aspects of the game as they all have different characteristics and ways that you can defeat them. You also have a time limit that requires you to be strategic so that way you can get as much done in a day. But there is no limit to the amount of days, so you can take as much time as possible. Since this is a port, it has a bunch of quality of life changes, including DLC missions from the original, some new missions featuring Olimar and Louie, and even new features such as the Piclopedia. There is also Bingo Battle, which is a fun local multiplayer game that has you try to collect items on a bingo card. Whoever gets a row, wins. Pikmin 3 Deluxe also has a demo available on the Nintendo eShop, so I deeply recommend trying it out if you're interested. Overall, Pikmin 3 Deluxe gets the 10th spot on the list. Super Mario Maker 2 is a sequel to the critically acclaimed Super Mario Maker on the Wii U and 3DS. This game truly deserves the 2 in its title, as there are a ton of new features and objects to create the Mario course of your dreams. There are newly added slopes, on and off blocks, new enemies, a brand new 3D world style, and much more. The game's level builder is completely robust and works really well in dock mode as well as handheld mode. And the game gives you a ton of freedom when designing your level. There are many themes and styles to choose from, including day and night, which add way more themes to the game. Once you're satisfied with your level, you can then upload it online for other players to play. And by connecting to the internet, you can play other players' levels. The game also has multiplayer modes too, including the ability to play with your friends, both locally and online. Multiplayer might be better depending on how good your Wi-Fi is and who you are connected to, but in my case, it works decently well, but sometimes it can look like a slideshow. And the game has had multiple large updates that have introduced new features, such as brand new bosses, power-ups like Link, modes like Ninji Speedrun, and even a world map builder which allows you to string your levels together to create your very own Mario game that can even be uploaded online. If you love 2D Mario and want an infinite amount of it, then this is the game for you. So overall, that's why Super Mario Maker 2 gets the 9th spot. During 2020, what game could have been better to come out at the right time other than Animal Crossing New Horizons. After a few spin-offs including the mess that was Amiibo Festival, this game brought the series back to its roots. This is the most accessible entry in the series by far, and the best looking one. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a time simulation that sees you living on an island that you get to help build from the ground up. You are able to craft items and tools using materials that you find, you can fish, catch bugs, dive for collectibles, and even dig up fossils to donate to your museum. And tools have durability, so you have to be mindful about that. But overall, you get lots of freedom, such as the ability to pick the locations of shops, facilities, and even homes, and you are able to relocate them afterwards too. And you have the ability to create inclines and bridges to further customize your island. And you also have the ability to decorate your island and even create your own patterns, which can be used for many purposes such as custom clothing, items, and even floor patterns. You can also invest in turnips, which is a great way to get a large amount of bells very quickly. This game can get you sucked in for hours, and playing with friends is easily the best part of this game, as you can join their islands and vice versa. And after a ton of free updates, there is a lot more to do, buy, craft, and collect. 
And that's why Animal Crossing New Horizons gets the 8th spot on the list. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the Wii U game back and better than ever. This Mario Kart game is quite possibly the best Mario Kart experience to date. The controls and physics are excellent, the tracks are fresh with the new anti-gravity mechanic, and there is also a great level of customization. There is a nice cast of characters and carts to choose from that aren't even from the Mario franchise such as Link. The soundtrack is incredible, and the graphics are very detailed. Battle mode has been completely redone in this version, with new battle courses instead of regular tracks that were used in the original version for this mode. Aside from a couple of new characters such as the Inklings, and Boo, and also Bowser Jr., and a ton of tweaks, such as the addition of a third tier to the drifting, the DLC from the Wii U is also included in the base game, so there is a lot of content. Multiplayer works very well, both locally and online, and the game also has brand new accessibility features, such as smart steering and auto acceleration. And finally, to have a purely handheld version of this game is also really cool. The game also has gone on to become the best-selling Nintendo Switch game. Overall, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe gets the 7th spot on the list. Just like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Mario 3D World is one of the many Wii U games that I've never gotten a chance to play before. But once I got my hands on it, and got used to the physics, controls, and movesets, I can safely say that this is one of my favorite Mario games. This game offers something very different from New Super Mario Bros. U and Super Mario Odyssey, as it is kind of a mix between the two. And even if the camera is a bit limited, it still does work very well. This game also has strong multiplayer, both locally and online, which works very well, and surprisingly isn't a slideshow like Super Mario Maker 2. Even though the game was designed with multiplayer in mind, it doesn't feel like the levels are designed to accommodate for them. With the many stages, power-ups, changes from the original, including a speed boost, this game is an excellent addition to the Nintendo Switch's library. But wait, this game has even more, with the new additional part being Bowser's Fury, a sort of cross between Super Mario 3D World and Odyssey. This game contains more of the explorative aspects of Super Mario Odyssey intact with a movable camera, but it also keeps the traditional mechanics from Super Mario 3D World, with the lack of a health bar of any sort and power-ups just like the Super Mushroom and others. And this game takes place in one cohesive world instead of many separate ones. And from the title, you can also expect that Bowser is up to no good, and you must stop him alongside your partner Bowser Jr. This is definitely a very experimental game, and hopefully some of these aspects will be borrowed into future Mario games. And that's why Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury gets the sixth spot on the list. At the number 5th spot, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This crossover fighting game packs a ton of content into one small package. You have 70 plus fighters, including every character from the older Smash Bros. games, and a few newcomers added. Each character has different movesets and playstyles, and Echo Fighters borrow movesets from other existing fighters. There are a ton of stages, modes, and music tracks. About 24 hours worth, in fact. This game also has an adventure mode called World of Light that sees you battling and collecting spirits while traversing across a large map. You can also create stuff too, as there is a stage builder, Mii Fighter creator, and movie editor. And you can also view and download the creations people make online, which is really neat. The game has so many options available that it allows you to play it however you want. There is also paid DLC available, such as the Fighters Pass 1 and 2, and each character has been an excellent addition to the game. But overall, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a must-have Nintendo Switch game, as it is a celebration of video games and achieved the impossible. Now to be honest, I am not the biggest JRPG fan out there. I haven't played many of them, and some of them can be a bit tedious, but Xenoblade Chronicles is the JRPG that immersed me into its incredible world with its epic story, excellent characters, and wonderful gameplay. This game puts you in the role of Shulk. You know that one character from Super Smash Bros. that says, I'm really, I'm really feeling, feeling it. it! Well, after a massive attack on his hometown, he and his childhood friend, Ryan, decide to leave and put a stomp to the Ageless War. Instead of turn-based combat that most JRPGs are well known for, this game has a real-time combat system that is more streamlined and relies on position with the correct moves. 
It's easy to get the hang of, but does take time to master. And believe me, this game is quite the long one. The story takes place on two massive titans, Mechonis and Bionis, that represent life and machinery, respectively. Shulk is able to wield the Minato, a powerful sword that is able to damage Mechon. The game's world is massive to explore, with secret areas, different enemies to encounter, and incredible scenery. For those who have played the original on the Wii, yes, this game was released on the Wii in 2012, the game has had a massive graphical upgrade. It now has new lighting and runs in the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 engine. The game is extremely accessible, with new quality of life features such as a casual mode that I totally didn't use, and the game also has a new epilogue story that takes place on a location of the Bionis that was left out of the original game. There's honestly so much to this game that I feel like I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg, and that is why Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition gets the fourth spot on the list. In the third spot is Luigi's Mansion 3. This game is an absolute masterpiece that takes everything that was good about the first Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube and the qualities and art style of the sequel Dark Moon. This game is a ton of fun, with each room being a delight to enter, with its many secrets, clever puzzles, and designs. There are a ton of new concepts introduced into the Luigi's Mansion series that feel right at home. The big new addition is Gooigi, which is your second playable character. You are able to switch between them at a press of a button, which can help with puzzle solving. And in co-op mode, the other player gets to play as Gooigi. The game also has a ton of extra content, including Scare Scraper, an online mode which you have to cooperate with four other players to try to complete the task in a certain time limit. Each floor is randomly generated, and co-op is supported too. And you also have Screen Park, which is a Mario Party-like mode that is fun for the whole family, allowing for 8 players. The game also has DLC available, which has added some new extras to the gallery, new mini-games for the Screen Park mode that have different themes, and new Scarescraper themes also that are really cool. And of course, if you are the completionist type, and want a whole lot more to do, there are achievements and collectibles. The graphics, animations, and music are incredible and extremely polished, and it's overall a complete package. I 100% recommend this game, and that's why it has the third spot on the list. Super Mario Odyssey is a return to the classic style of Mario games that were established in Super Mario 64 and Sunshine. This game encourages exploration, puzzle solving, and platforming. The goal of the game is to collect power moons, a power source that will allow you to journey to farther kingdoms and progress throughout the game. At first glance, the story of the game might seem like any other Mario game. Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach and Mario must go rescue her and defeat Bowser. But in Super Mario Odyssey, things play out a bit differently as Bowser is planning a wedding to marry Princess Peach. And there are many different scenarios that change up the formula significantly and you'll realize that as soon as the beginning of the game starts. The signature new mechanic is Cappy, Mario's classic hat, but now alive. You can throw Cappy to interact with the world, and when timed right, you can also jump on it, which adds a whole nother layer to the game, and allows you to get to areas that you normally wouldn't be able to get to. In addition, Mario also has an expanded moveset, and improved physics that have been perfected. But that's not all, because Cappy can also allow Mario to take control and capture many different creatures and characters. This allows for some cool gameplay ideas and mechanics. The bosses and characters are all very unique, especially the new Brutals, and Pauline even returns after many years as the new Donk City Mayor. This game doesn't offer much in terms of multiplayer, only a mildly fun co-op mode. But the game also has an assist mode, which is helpful for younger players. The soundtrack, graphics, and art style are perfected, so if you're a fan of 3D Mario, this is a must-have game, and Wank is the second spot on the list. So before we get to our final game, let's take a look at 5 honorable mentions that were very close to making the list, but weren't quite. These won't be in any particular order. Super Mario 3D All-Stars is an excellent collection of three of Mario's greatest adventures. The collection includes Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. They are all in HD, vibrant, and play better than ever before. 
Splatoon 2 is a multiplayer third-person shooter. The game revolves around the use of ink, which allows you to splat opponents, cover ground, and swim in it. It's a really fun game and awesome to play with friends online, but you will need a Nintendo Switch Online membership to fully enjoy it. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. Who would have guessed? Even if it may not be as superior, it's a great sequel with some stunning locations, excellent characters, and a fantastic story. Paper Mario The Origami King is a huge improvement from the recent Paper Mario games, Sticker Star and Color Splash. It has a fun cast of characters, a decent plot, and a beautifully crafted world to explore. The battle system might not be the game's biggest strength, but I did find it enjoyable to say the least. It might not be the best Paper Mario game, but I do think it's a worthy entry in the series, and a game that you should try. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is an excellent remake from its Game Boy counterpart. The gameplay and world have been carefully preserved, allowing for a similar experience with better visuals, music, and accessibility. So if you've always wanted to play the original or want to have the same experience all over again, then this is a game that I definitely recommend. And that concludes the honorable mentions. And with that out of the way, the game that gets the number one spot is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This game leaves most of the tropes of past Zelda games behind, but it totally reinvents the gameplay and feel. Link has a brand new amazing design, and there are new concepts and brand new ancient technology that the game revolves around. This game is a masterpiece of puzzle solving, story, and exploration. The open world non-linear structure is very unique, because you can go literally anywhere you see in the distance. You can climb any mountain, and mostly any building. And you can journey to wherever you want, and do whatever you want, and see whatever you want in this massive sandbox as it's very accessible and gives you a lot of freedom. You can also play the game at your own pace, and the game will never annoy you to do so. There are side quests, and also an adventure log to organize your accomplishments. There are shrines to solve all over the place, which are pretty much like dungeons, and then when completing them, they will award you with sphere orbs that you can upgrade your health and stamina. You collect many different items, including weapons, tools, and food, and you can create your own food dishes too. However, you are unable to craft any weapons. This makes it so you have to look for weapons all over the world and decide which one is better than the other. Although weapons do have durability, so you have to be careful. You also have special abilities provided by your Sheikah Slate, a device that you can use to solve puzzles and even defeat enemies. The cell shaded art style is stunning, as it takes inspiration from the Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. But overall, this game is a masterpiece and is definitely a must-have Nintendo Switch game as it works very well in handheld and docked. I'm always finding new things every time I play the game, and there's just so much to do, and for that, it's 100% worth the price, and puts other games to shame. Anyways, that's about it for the video, I hope you guys did enjoy it, and of course if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a like, as more videos are heading your way. You're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is also pretty cool. And I'll see you all in the next one.